Okay, guys. Hello, hello, hello. So I have tried to set up the cameras as best as I can. I'm not quite sure which one exactly is recording the best, <laughs> but we've got both going. So welcome. Um, so today I wanted to bring you guys together. It's been a year since this book came out, even longer, and I've had so many tweaks and twists that I've actually put into the different recipes. And since journeying through becoming a genetic specialist, there's been quite a few things that have become quite obvious to me. And so I, uh, I wanted to share with everyone some of my favourite tweaks. Make sure this earpiece is working. Here's some of my favourite tweaks in the recipe. So um, first off, what I'm going to do is mix up the things that are going to take the longest. So um, the brownies are going to take the longest to cook. Then we're going to make up the batter for the uh, waffles. And then we're going to make up the uh, chocolate mousse so that can sit while we make the waffles and the brownies finish off. So you can see how it all comes together in the end. Uh, these are perfect for a breakfast idea. They're guilt-free, beautifully delicious and well-balanced as well. So. Keeping it nice and easy, um, I thought I would run with the chocolate, uh, sorry, with the um, brownie mixture first. So I'm just going to grab my sweet potato out of the fridge. I've already pre-mashed this one, so don't get too fussy. The um, sweet potato mash is something that I quite often can make and then freeze for a later on time, which um, works perfect. So um, while I get this ready, I thought I'd say Merry Christmas to everybody. It's such a beautiful time of year with the friends and family. Um, and I hope you're all doing something amazing tomorrow. That's why I thought I'd quickly pop this one up so you can make this for breakfast uh, tomorrow. Or you can also make these for New Year's as well. They're a really good family treat. I'm sure many of you are going to be around the family for quite some time this week. So let's get well underway. In here I have sweet potato that I have just mashed. Um, I use this in a few different things. I've made extra because when we get to the mousse, I want to talk a bit about different people's body types and what's actually required. So the extra mash is there for a little bit of a tweak so I can show you guys a few little twists on my favourites. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the, um, oh, and I suppose I should show those who don't yet have a copy. Uh, it's actually on sale now until, I'll bring it in here or here. Um, it's actually on sale in the hard copy signed um, at 30% off. So today we're going in with the, and gosh, trust me guys, I have a bad memory too, so don't fret. <laughs> so we're going to go in with the Naughty But Nice Vegan Brownies. So you can egg, egg, this, egg to this if you're someone who eats, um, if you're not a vegan, and that's totally fine. But if you want to give it a whirl being a bit of a vegan style, then have a crack. Let's not be biased here and just um, and have a go. I am going to show you some different sweetening variations, uh, which is entirely up to you. So you can have it whichever way you like. So um, starting off with the sweet potato mash, which I've just steamed. Just steamed really, really well. I have got an amazing Breville food processor. Um, and this is my love of my life. <laughs> She's a beauty. She goes everywhere with me for my private chefing clients and for any of my cooking demos. Um, so I'm going to take my 600 grams of sweet potato mash. I'm going to pop that in here. Mm. Okay. I'm now going to take my dates. So for those who don't know much about medjool dates, I'm going to come into this camera here. So with the medjool dates, they're amazing. You can actually mush them. And these are great when you're using for all of your slices, all your brownies, anything like that. Back when I made this book, this was the main featured sweetener that most people were using, especially your diabetics and whatnot. But what I found out since then is a lot of our genetic types actually can't digest dates. So by having to use alternative sweeteners like apple puree, um, you can get dried figs and reconstitute, rehydrate them with some hot water. Uh, and you can also then use things like honey. If you're not a vegan, that's, um, if you're a vegan that's okay with honey, go for it. Um, otherwise, you can use maple syrup, rice syrup, xylitol, zorbitol, whatever sweetening you're actually in favour of. But traditionally, the dates, I will say, they do get the best results. So I've actually taken the seeds out of these dates. If you have normal dates and you want to use them up, um, that's okay, just boil the kettle and put it over the top of the dates and let it sit for like 20 minutes and that will actually soften them and reconstitute them and make them really, really great for this mixture right here. After that, we're going to grab our, um, I'm going to add to this the vanilla and the coconut, actually, sorry, I'm going to hold off on the coconut oil. I'm going to add the vanilla and let this mix down. Where's my lid going? Okay. 
not too noisy this one. So you really want to stop it frequently and scrape down the sides because you want the dates and the sweet potato to become quite velvety. I'm glad it's Christmas. I've been wanting to get these recordings up and done for quite some time. So, And there's so many variations you can do. Think outside the box. And away she goes. Okay, scrape down once again. I'm going to go three times through just to really get that velvety consistency with the dates and the mash. I do have quite an industrial sized um, machine here, so she does take a fair bit, so I can just splatter it up the side. Okay, beautiful. Scrape it all back in again. Now we're going to add in our cacao powder and we're going to blend again. These aren't essential, these machines. Um, you can use a blender, um, but I think food processes are just so perfect for everyone. So some cacao powder. Cacao powder is one of the most highest um, quantities of vitamin C in the natural form of the powder. So it has heaps of pure vitamin C, magnesium, potassium, phosphorus, zinc, you name it, it's a powerhouse. It's actually such a superfood, so it's so amazing for everybody. Um, into that, at the same time, I'm going to add my sweetener. So today I'm actually going to use some um, coconut, um, coconut syrup, <laughs> stuck on the tongue there. A good tablespoon and a half. Just because I'm going to be going to go play with, uh, with the kids tomorrow. So they are used to normal sweetness. I'm not. Um, but it just depends. You can just vary this to whatever your taste buds like. And I might leave it at that for now. Look at that colour. It's just gone so rich and dark and chocolatey. Now, what I've done today to make it a little bit special is I've actually gone and bought organic cranberries. So, sorry, cherries. Sorry, cherries. Organic cherries. Now, we know what a fresh cherry looks like, but a dried cherry, if they're not organic, quite often they're covered in some nasty little preservatives and a lot of sugar. Um, so, I went out of my way to make sure I got the ones that aren't like that. So, they're actually really nice and tart, which I think is just perfect at Christmas time. So, if you have a look. Again, I'll use this camera over here because it's clearer. You can see a normal cherry and you see a dried cherry. Almost looks like dates. So what I'm going to do today is once we add in our flour, I'm going to stick that in at the last minute and just pulse that through and then we're going to pack that into our tray. So from here I have um, my buckwheat flour, 100 grams. I also have my almond meal, 100 grams. Get those out of the way. So being this the theme Christmas, I'm also going to throw in my coconut, beautiful coconut. And one thing I do add, and you don't have to, this is just my personal preference. I use a vegan protein powder um, by Designer Physique. Um, I love their pea protein powder and their carob protein powders. I've used them for years, um, and I've been working alongside them for quite some time, and I'm just, I'm quite partial to it. So it's entirely up to you as to which one you want to go with. Um, but I love the consistency and the flavour it gives. It actually holds such a great, and you'll see me using it in the chocolate mousse. So I'm just going to add a tablespoon in there especially the vanilla. I just love the depth of flavour that it adds. And I also like to add a pinch of salt this while we're doing the Christmas flavour because we're adding in the cherries. Um, it's just going to bring in that depth of flavour and bring out more of the flavour of the cherry. Not much, just half, half a teaspoon. No, sorry, just a quarter of a teaspoon. Here. Oh, the machine's enjoying the challenge. Must be a diplomat machine. All it is is just throwing it all together and allowing the machine to do what it has to. Okay, coconut oil is going to go in now. 
two tablespoons melted that is uh, sorry um solid and then i melt it i'm also going to throw through my cherries i'm going to leave a few just to sprinkle on top guys with some pepitas today and i'm going to pulse it oh machine smoking and there we go Beautiful. So I've got a tray here that I'm using. You can use a thick tray or a thin tray. Like I use like the inch, inch um, deep trays that you can quite often use for your brownies, or you can use this thin one that I'm going to use because I like to pack them out. Now you can as well. I'm going to stick the chocolate along the top so I can sort of keep it all even and measured and then pat it down. Um, you can mix it through. It's entirely up to you, but I find it breaks up the big luscious chunks too much. And I like to find a big surprise in the top of my mixture. Oh, and if you've got the kids with you, get them in here and have fun. Look at that. It smells divine. Absolutely divine. Scrape it all off. Obviously, this is only the, for, this part's for the adults to lick. <laughs> These blades are amazingly sharp. But you can't waste this dough. It's just too good. Just too damn good. You will also notice that I will probably minimum just rinse this off because everything I'm making today is all vegan and chocolate. I'm actually not going to be fussed at rinsing this off. And I know some of you are going to be like, oh my gosh, but please um, understand there's nothing of bother in here. There's nothing in here that can really be of detriment. It's all just veggies. And the chocolate mousse has many similar um, properties of ingredients anyway so it's really not gonna it's not going to mess with the uh, recipe at all look at that so doughy so gooey it's just going to be amazing now i've gone to flannery those who like flannery's or have like a fundies or a whole foods place where i do most of my shopping for these sort of dishes Just using a spatula to push that out. A good trick is to actually, once you've spread it a bit, please make sure your fingers are clean, it's your food. Just wet your spatula and that will enable you to be able to spread it a bit easier. Hold one corner, spread it into the corner you're holding. And then that'll enable you to spread it to the other corners as well without the paper shifting too much. I am going to grab the phone in a second and bring that over so you guys can get a clear shot of this. Don't be too pretty. If there's any jagged bits that stick up, they actually end up quite crunchy and delicious. Now my oven has been preheating guys, as always with recipes in baking, oven is always preheating. Probably should have said that at the beginning, but most of you are super duper clever enough to know that. I rinse these fingers. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in with these leftover uh, cherries. Uh oh, I found a seed. Right, is a good idea to get your fingers in there. I know some people worry about that, but it's actually a good idea to get your fingers in there so you can make sure there's no extra seeds floating around because you just can't guarantee that they've got them all. I'm gonna throw in some pepitas for color and crunch. You can use hazelnuts, you can use macadamia nuts, whatever you like. I figure with the Christmas theme, we just wanna have that beautiful variation in color and texture. And the chocolate, the vegan chocolate. Lots and lots. I use one that's vegan, so it uses actually um, all your coconut palm sugar. And I'm just going to spread that out, get the chunks nice and even, and pat it down with my fingers. All right, I'm going to bring you over and I'm going to let you check this out. You ready? Sharing is caring, guys. Come on down. And I'm just going to swatch you around. 
check out the yes. I hope you can see this on both cameras. All the chocolate things. So I just had it all here set up ready to go. Next, we're going to make our waffle mixture and let that sit for a bit. And then we're going to come over and we're going to make our, um, our chocolate avocado mousse. You can see I've already got that one set up there. And I'm going to show you some tricks about not using eggs. So I'll pop you back up here. We're going to throw this in the oven. Let me bring this screen back up. I hope this is working for you guys. I've never done it like this. So and it's kind of cool because once I get the hang of this, I'm going to start doing more videos. So there'll be a lot more content coming out for you guys to follow along, a lot more free recipes. You'll be able to send in requests on different vegetables and dishes that you might want me to play with. So all I'm doing is sitting that not at the top of the oven, I'm sitting it just down a bit. We want it to be high enough to get a good enough heat crust, uh, but not too high to burn at the top and not cook all the way through. I've had it at 200, so it had a really good heat in there. I'm now going to drop it down to 190 and let that pop away and do its thing. Get rid of this extra potato. So now we're going to go in with our waffle mixture. So just a light rinse. Like I said, guys, nothing too for long. How good is Carissa? I'm sorry, this will get me singing. I do love singing. Okay, so, <laughs> so the waffle mixture. Waffles are one of those things that I actually hate having a recipe for. I've never had a recipe for. I've always literally just gone into my cupboards and figured out what I had in there as a flour content, what I had in the cupboards for moisture, um, and, and so on. So what I'm actually going to show you guys today is what I have in my cupboard today. If you want me to write up a recipe, please email me or message me and I will send you out a pretty well pulled together of what I've done. But it's not 100% necessary. So let's go with, today I had in my cupboard was some gluten-free self-raising flour. I don't often use the gluten-free self-raising flour. Um, I do prefer to make combinations of, of, of other mixtures. But you could, there's so many different mixtures you can make it yourself. But because I have it, I'm going to use it. And it's all about just using what you have in the cupboards. So before we get into that, what we are going to do is use our egg replacer. So I hope everyone's heard of egg replacers before, but what we're actually going to use is just flaxseed. So all I've done is got a flaxseed meal. Ooh. I'm going to mix that in with twice the amount of water. And that will become a gelatinous mixture. Just give it a quick stir become kind of pasty so it's so fibrous and it actually has a protective layer on the outside of the um, seed the actual flax seed and it almost becomes like a, a gel um, that's a setting agent so it's really really good as a um, as a replacement for eggs this is why we use it as for our vegan community now people keep asking me am I vegan and the truth is I'm what we call a flexitarian so as a genetic specialist, um, I know that for my specific body type, I eat breakfast actually just before I started shooting. I ate a little bit of fruit, nothing too substantial. My lunch is between two and four and my dinner is between six and eight. And so if I'm going to eat meat, if I choose to eat some kind of protein or animal format, um, or even my vegan protein is what I more often than not will use, um, I will have it at lunch with carbs. And then at dinner time, I eat like a lean vegan. So that's knowing and understanding your body and how it functions best is so such, key, uh, such a key thing. Um, I don't train as much as I used to. So I've managed to maintain my weight by knowing when to sleep until, when to eat, what to eat and why. So it's really essential these days of layering all this science and knowledge so that you can get the most out of your day and not be fighting a losing battle, really. So let's get into the rest of this mixture. So... I have in here some coconut flour, mm -hmm. the dark one, a coconut flour cup, half a cup, ooh, half a cup of tapioca flour. Here we go, guys, I'm back in. And I'm just going to plonk that straight into the bottom. I'm also going to throw in a cup of almond meal. Now, you can use blanched or unblanched, it's not going to matter. I'm also going to throw in a uh, two thirds of a cup of. Um, the gluten-free flour. 
Now, if you like, and so this is what I mean, if you're happy for it to be a thick consistency, use your chia seeds, extra flax seeds, um, all your heavier stuff, your shredded coconut, things like that to give it flavour and texture. You could throw in some sesame seeds and whatnot. Not a problem at all. So I am going to sprinkle through a little bit of um, chia seeds, but if you do, you're going to want to add a little bit of extra moisture to the dish because those chia seeds are going to suck that up quite well. I'm going to add in my vanilla essence. I'm going to add in, and vanilla essence I'd use a fair bit, probably two tablespoons. Here today I have left with me some coconut palm sugar. It has a really nice caramely flavour to it. It's so good in these dishes. I'm also going to add in one teaspoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of bicarb soda. And I'm also going to throw in a little bit of my vanilla protein powder. So just a tablespoon of that, just for that consistency and thickness. Some shredded coconut because I think it is amazing being Christmas time. Some salt. A little smidge more than that. I have to give you guys a tour. I keep getting asked for a tour of my kitchen because everyone always wants to know what is actually in my kitchen. And I will do this. If you guys request it, I will do it at some stage soon. Now, your sweetener. It is entirely up to you where your morale stands. Do you go with rice malt syrup? Are you someone who likes that? Do you like honey? This has actually been um, collected by my partner's parents. They're actually our beekeepers. So to me, I view this honey. I'm okay with honey. And if you're not, that is absolutely fine. I fully understand and love and respect you for that. Um, but because these are grown by the family, grown locally, I believe in genealogy. So eating things and consuming things from where you are living so that you can best support your, your energy, your body with the exact immediate environment. And I think that's really quite essential. So I'm just going to throw a little bit of hot water in there because I'm at the bottom of it. A little bit of hot water. Swish that around. I may need you a spoon. She's looking pretty thick. I'm going to pour that in. Scrape out the bottom so the parents can have another jar. I do love recycling. And at the end, you are going to taste it and decide whether you want to have more um, sugar or not. Now, because we are going as an egg-free option, um, I use um, apple cider vinegar. And if you guys haven't actually noticed, real apple cider vinegar is very murky. And that's because it has the mother, and the mother is the probiotic in it that actually helps the body's digestion and to break down the fats and the sugars and help the body immensely. So I'm going to use a tablespoon of that because that will react with the bicarb soda and the baking powder to help make them lighter and fluffier. I'm going to pour in my flaxseed egg. So it's become quite thick. And it will continue to thicken. This is why we're making it now and we're going to let this sit. And coconut oil, I add about a tablespoon and a half of coconut oil to the actual mixture. Let's get that mixing and I am going to then add in slowly. You can use almond milk, you can use coconut milk, whichever milk you are happy to use, normal milk if you're, if you're a dairy eater. And I'm going to add about a cup and a half. And away we go. It does all the work for me. I've used about a half at this point. Open it up, scrape down your sides. Yeah, I'm going to add a little more because it is still quite thick and I know that those chia seeds and flax seeds are going to expand quite a bit more. So we're probably going to use about two-thirds of the... Um, two-thirds of the mixture. Two-thirds of the bottle of um, milk. Give that one a quick rinse off and then what we're going to do is stick this into a bowl. So you can see you can make it all flow and you can add quite a few different things for Christmas. Ready to go. All right. Popping out my centre. Now, 
The other thing, oh, who likes banana pancakes and banana waffles? Another really great idea that you can totally do because banana is another egg replacer, just in case you didn't know. Now, again, I'm going to talk about genetic stuff. Some body types can only have banana every so often. So please be aware if you're not, if you haven't heard about your profile yet and you're curious, let me know and I'll send you some information on how to obtain that. But if you are one of my genetic clients and you do know, do you have your profile there, please check what's on your profile. Are you better to have banana? Are you better to have pear? Are you better to have papaya? Whatever it might be. Please use your Shea app and check what's going to be best for you. Beautiful. And it smells oh, so vanilla-y and so beautiful. I'm going to show you a gift that I was given by my beautiful partner soon for the waffles, and you will be in awe. I do have a few people that... Sorry, guys. Okay. I do have some links on how you can obtain some of these equipment that I've just made my life. So darn helpful. So let's pop this one in the fridge for now. I shall we'll leave that out. And let's talk about our sweet potato. Oh, I just got a text message from someone asking what milk I'm using. So today I'm using, in a goodness, I'm using unsweetened. Just because I don't trust what they're going to put in there, I just, I never quite know which one they're actually going with and what's actually that ingredient. Because as we know, all too many, all too many times, they hide different sweeteners and they use all these maladextrins and ugh, all these terrible, terrible ingredients that just are not necessary. Quite baffling, actually. Get these out of the way. Or do I love having a dishwasher on days like today? Okay, chocolate mousse time. Everyone's favourite. So without chocolate mousse, sorry guys, I'm just going to clear this out of the way for you. All my little extras, and let's bring over this chocolate and milk ingredients. We also bought, I don't know if you've seen in my video just a second ago, I scanned across I've got an entire tray of beautiful ripe mangoes there. So, as per the typical Australian, I'm going to show you guys oh, how these beautiful mangoes and how this all comes together into the ultimate, ultimate Christmas breakfast. So Without chalky mousse, taking my amazing blade here. And again, it's all vegan. You just need to rinse things off. Don't be too pedantic. Popping that one in there. So, again, we're going to use our beautiful fresh dates, medjool dates. Or if you are genetically required, and I'm always going to come back to this, guys, because it's really important that our health starts to move in the right direction and people start understanding, you're all individuals. And what works for one person will not work for another. And so that's why I think it's so essential in these days for you to start to understand what is actually best for you. So I am going to use dates today because we are going with the original recipe. But I'm only going to, instead of using the full amount, I'm only going to use three. Um, and I'm also going to use some of the sweet potato mash. Now, if you are a Shea app user with your genetics, have a look and see if you have got papaya. Avocado is the main ingredient in this one, so most of you have got avocado. Um, but if not, papaya works really well in this with coconut oil. Um, frozen mango works quite well. Um, pear, apple, all these sort of things can be a great sweetening agent in here. So I'm going to throw in my dates. I'm going to throw in my avocados that I've already done and I'm going to do one for you right in front of you. I'm just taking out the beautiful avocados. Now, the other good thing is Christmas time, we're in Australia, wherever you're tuning in from, hello. <laughs> it's actually really bright outside. It's actually very hot today, so typical Australian uh, Christmas time. But our avocados will go quite right, quite easy. So this is a great recipe for using up old avocados. Um, that have gone, that are about to go to their last legs. This is a cool way of using them up to make sure they don't get wasted. Now, the even cooler part is this is awesome. This mixture we're about to go through. And you get a set of standing lines with it too. 
<laughs> this mousse is actually really great to freeze. You can freeze it in ice cubes to have as a nice, um, satisfying dessert when you're trying to obviously cut back on naughty things. It can also be frozen as a gelato. It can be used as an icing on cakes or we're going to use it as our um, sauce on our waffles. So it's so versatile and just so good for you. We all know what avocado does for us. It's got good fats. It's got your good omegas. Um, it also has a fairly high amount of protein. Quite a few vegans have actually managed to sustain living on avocados. Not recommending you do that because not many biotrends can actually handle that much uh, fats and whatnot. So I'm going to throw in the avocado. This is also a really good way to get a sweet treat. So I have quite a few parents who have issues with their children having um, having good food groups. So we have a lot of children that have got a lot of food issues both um, mental and um, requirements due to dietary problems. So these are a really good way of actually hiding a lot of cool veggies and fruits and whatnot into um, these treats. The kids think they're having like a, a naughty treat, but actually we're actually winning as parents because they're having really, really good foods. So I'm going to throw in there some cinnamon. And I'm not going, I'm going to throw a tiny bit of the cacao in now, but I want to blend that down with some water and get that to become quite um, velvety. It will take a few scrape downs. Okay, scrape down the side. So you will see I'm going to use a bit of water and a bit of coconut cream. So you can use, and it's up to you, if you want it extra creamy, you can use coconut cream, coconut milk, almond milk, uh, macadamia nut milk, anything you like. Uh, you could even use sheep's milk, goat's milk, goat's yogurt. It's entirely versatile. And that's what I want everyone to understand is that these ingredients, these recipes are so versatile. We're not stuck for options anymore. We have so much variety that we can use. So I've got a coconut and almond mixture here that I'm going to put in. So I've used a cup of fluid now. I'm going to add in a bit more of my cacao powder. So what happens sometimes with the avocados, if they're not fully ripe, they'll come quite chunky. So you want to add in that cacao powder to aid in making it quite a smooth blend. And we know that once we add the vegan protein powder in, she gets thick really quick. I'm going to add in my vanilla essence. Vanilla essence or vanilla, um, pure vanilla gel. Oh, vanilla paste is the best, I must admit. Um, but if you like me and you use your vegan protein powder, I love to find ways of making these things. So if we add a protein into a sweet treat and something with the fats, we're actually going to slow down our digestion, aiding in satiety, aiding in the ability to control our cravings and our hunger. So I do very often add my vegan protein powder into these sort of treats because it just helps your body to be more satisfied. At this point, I'm going to add in my vegan protein powder. So I'm using a chocolate one for this recipe because it is all chocolatey. Two scoops. And now watch it. So I'm going to add another half cup. So this is a, sorry, a quarter of a cup. So this is a full cup of milk. I'm also at this point going to add in, because it's Christmas, organic maple syrup. Now, the toss up, this means it is fully vegan, but it also means that um, there's an argument about maple and honey. There always has been, always will be. Just turn that down five degrees to just over 180. Honey has certain healing properties. Maple syrup has certain healing properties, but a lot higher content of vitamins and minerals. So you can see how they both work so well. So I'm going to pour in two tablespoons of organic maple. And we're going to finish this process. Scrape down the edges. It should be nice and thick and velvety now and just smelling amazing. So like I said, you can eat this fresh or you can freeze it. Use it for a cake icing. Or we're going to use it on our waffles. And then we're heading up the beach tomorrow being an Australian Christmas. 
we're going to head up the beach and we're going to have this with our friends. Beautiful. I'm going to be lazy and just throw this whole bad boy into my fridge so that we can get on to making our waffles. But Santa Claus is getting in the way. And yes, sorry, I've got my sweet potato here. The other thing is, is you can make, use your sweet potato in your um, avocado mousse. You can use your sweet potato to help thicken it and actually come up really creamy. So I have a lot of clients who find that when their initial profile activates, they're actually extremely restricted because their body's just in such a state that it needs some serious attention. So they'll start taking a lot of things out of your diet for a little while until your body reboots and starts to heal itself again. Because at the end of the day, that's what our philosophy is with PH360 is to help your body to heal itself best. So if you're in that situation, fear not, you actually have the opportunity to use um, things like sweet potato as a sweetener and a beautiful um, additive for uh, smoothies and the chocolate mousse. So let's pop this beautiful one back in the fridge. I'm all about ensuring that people would never ever feel like they're going to miss out because you don't have to miss out. You just get to vary, variate things. Variate things? God, I sound like Huey. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys my one of my favourite gifts. Apart from my food processor, this is my second favourite gift. Um, and it is like the waffle iron of all waffle irons. And I know you're all going to be extremely jealous when you see this. Ready? Come with me. I love to share. This makes waffles easy for everyone. <laughs> it's a full burner waffle iron. Can you guys see that? How cool is that? So I've got some coconut oil there. I've got a little um, oiler, oil brush, just a light, just a light brush. It's brand new, so it's, it's pretty good, but you always get that one or two that sticks and you just want to cry. Because as you can see, this getting stuck with waffle bits in it is just going to be hell. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold you while I'm talking to you. How does that sound? Let me hold you. And I love to sing. So. I'm going to spoon da, 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 a nice big spoonful in there. You can see how aerated that is. It's quite a thick mixture, so it will take a bit of time to cook. One and a half, look at that. Hope you guys can see that. I wish you could smell this. Pop this bad boy down. She is going to do her thing, honey. Bring you back around. Okay, so while that is finishing off, let's check on our beautiful brownies. The kids are out in the room playing and I'm sure they can smell it. I heard a comment just before. <laughs> so I've made enough mixture here. That mixture that I made will probably give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten to twelve waffles, depending on how big I make the mixture. In the meantime, let's get sexy with some fruit. So how many of you have seen other um, mangoes and you're never quite sure which way to cut them to guarantee you get them right? I'm gonna show you all. With our mangoes, if you have a look at a mango, they quite often have a elongated version. So they're tall and they quite often have a bit of a kick out to one side. That's usually where the, the tip of the seed is sitting. And that's where your, your core comes in. So you see how it has that little kick out on it. That way there is where the seed is. So we're going to cut down either side of it. And you're getting cake decorating options here too. So I've already done one cheek off. And I'm going to show you the other side. Just coming down and a good way to do it is just beside that little um, stem point, you're going to hit the seed just lightly. 
very slightly vary off to the edge and just follow the seed. Make sure you can sort of feel that seed along the edge of that knife the whole way down. From here, we've got our two cheeks. I always come down from the stem again and go around the outside of the seed. Again, a nice sharp knife and you'll feel the seed will give at certain points and you'll feel the flesh. Always stick as close to the seed as you can so you don't waste too much. These are always us kids used to run around with seed dripping out of our mouths throughout Christmas time. Now, to cut into your, your pretty little fans, I'm going to stay about here. <laughs> Actually, I might bring you forward. Rocky. All right. So from here, all I normally do is take the seed in my hand. I then know where my hand is. I don't want to cut myself, so I'm going to be very aware. With a very sharp knife, and it is crucial you have a sharp knife, you can usually hit the skin and feel where it is. And all I'm doing is coming down with the knife to the point where I can feel the skin and the knife at the skin, and I'm just gently going to run across, run across, turn it around, coming down sideways with a slight movement. All I'm doing is like a few mils just to cut through those beautiful fibrous um, fleshy parts of the, smish, of the mango, not of my skin. Another way of doing your mangoes, so this one here is going to pop out into my fan. Another way of doing it is actually cutting them into strips. Like so. And then I'm going to lay that onto the bench. Oh my gosh, there's so much beautiful smells happening in here. It's incredible. I stick my tip down. Oops. You can see it from the computer as well. Stick the tip down and I put my, the tip of my knife just inside the skin. Just inside the skin. Skin, that, and the knife goes just on the inside. And I push my knife and very carefully just push it against the fruit and you'll actually manage to get the skin off. And that little bit of skin stays on the chopping board. So again, I'm just going to put my knife inside the skin just ever so, and I have my knife flat. And because I've got it against the chopping board, my fingers are out of the way, I'm pushing down on the skin, but just imagining that I'm just trying to run the blade across flat. Don't try and dig down, don't try and dig up. Keep your blade flat to the, like parallel to the chopping board. Let's finish off this little piece here. It's actually much quicker to flick it across that way. Your berries are essential to rinse them well. I use Kangen water machine, so I actually soak all of my fruit and produce prior to using them to ensure I get all the pesticides and, and, and nasty chemicals and things like that off of my berries. These are essential. There's no, no leeway with this. You have to rinse your berries. They're always covered in all kinds of terrible things. So I'm going to cut a few of those in half. Let's check on these waffles. Oh, they're just beautiful. A little bit longer. Just touch them. They're still a little bit soft. So I'm going to get a beautiful plate. Enjoy my noise. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not. I'd be well known to be a bull in a china shop. So as that one's finishing, let's make a few more last pretty adjustments. I've got some kiwi fruit that are amazing for everybody. Most people can have kiwi fruit. You can peel them. I remember as a kid running around not peeling them. And as long as you rub those little hairy bits off the outside, you can generally eat them. The hairy bits that stuck in the tongue and give you that horrible, like, ah, kind of feeling. So those we're going to use, I've got a little bit extra maple there. I've got some coconut yogurt, so stick them with a the dairy-free. Use whichever one you're partial to. There's a few different brands that I quite like. Um, if you want to know that, let me know. Um, and we've got some beautiful fresh cherries because it's Christmas. Because it's Christmas. So, these smell astonishing. I'm going to give them another minute and a half. But in the meantime, let's check on those brownies, guys. Oh, they smell divine. Check that they don't need turning. Some people's ovens are a little bit iffy. They will get served afterwards, and for time's sake, I may actually just uh, send you guys through some photos of them done up, just so you guys aren't stuck with me for ages. <laughs> you guys know me, I'm a foodie. 
could be here all day in the kitchen and love it. As long as you guys are here enjoying it, I'm happy. Most of you will be watching the replay because I know it's the day before Christmas. Everyone's running around crazy trying to get away presents, last minute presents. But you could be making brownies or waffles and delivering these tomorrow with love, made fresh yourself. It's a cheap, healthy, lovable option for Christmas and New Year's. And the family love it. We are spending way too much on gifts these days. It's disgusting. Um, and I think this is just so much better. So much better. So let's plate these beautiful babies up. So I have a waffle. I have some mangoes. I have some kiwi fruit. We're going to throw in some blueberries. And a few cherries. I'm going to stick a little bit of this beautiful um, coconut yogurt. But first, oh, first, 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 slow down, Shana, slow down. First, we're going to grab that avocado chocolate mousse out. So, if this doesn't look amazing, nothing will. <laughs> And I am literally just dolloping that beautiful, voluptuous, sexy, sexy, healthy. Oh my gosh, it just excites me. <laughs> With a bit of our yogurt. And I'm going to finish that off with some strawberries. And the pista de the stones. Now bring you over here because you want to be close. I want you to like smell it, taste it. Have a look at that. Can you guys see that? The waffle machine's done. Have a look at that. So this is our organic maple and are you ready? Mm. Oh my goodness. There is not a parent, a grandparent, or a child that will not love that. I'm going to get some photos of that bad boy and post it up into the group for you guys. Let's check on these brownies. I'll show you where it's at now. So, it's still quite gooey. I'm going to actually turn that one down, and I'm going to let it sit for another 10 minutes, and then turn the oven off, bring it out to dry, to dry, to sit. I'm going to clean up. Enjoy this beautiful day with the family. Make some more waffles ready for breakfast tomorrow morning for Christmas. Actually, I think one or two of them are still getting up. Teenagers. Um, and I love you all. Have a great Christmas, a beautiful New Year's. Send me your love, send me your feedback, some more ideas. And in the new year, if this worked for you guys, let me know because I'd love to start teaching more and more different dishes. I'd love to work with some of your requests on what you might be liking. Love you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you.